Hello and welcome to the Insight Clinic Lectures. This is Dr. Amrit and I will be taking you towards the second part of the hypermetropia, that is, the components of hypermetropia. Hypermetropia has various components which we will be discussing one by one. These are the latent hypermetropia, manifest hypermetropia, and total hypermetropia and under the heading of manifest hypermetropia i will be telling you what is meant by facultative hypermetropia and what is meant by absolute hypermetropia let us talk about first the latent hypermetropia so to understand the latent hypermetropia we should know about the basic principle of accommodation so what happens in a normal eye is that we have a crystalline lens which is connected to the ciliary body using certain processes which are called zonules and the ciliary body which is a part of a choroid it consists of a muscle called ciliaris muscle so what happens is whenever we want to look from far to near the ciliary muscle will undergo contraction and as the ciliary muscle undergoes contraction the zonules which are connecting the ciliary body to the uh, to the lens will undergo relaxation and they will become lax because of the laxity of the zonules the and the lens will now be free to move anteriorly or, or what i mean to say is the lens can now uh, can bulge forwards and as the lens bulges forwards it tends to become somewhat fatter and therefore the power of the lens will increase and what did i tell you in the previous video that whenever the power of the lens will increase it will start focusing the light rays much more forward much more ahead than what it was focusing before and this principle helps you to see the near objects and this is what is called as accommodation so now what happens in hypermetropia we already know that in hypermetropia the rays are passing behind the retina and focusing behind the retina now to correct this we need to make this lens more powerful and bring these rays on to the retina now now what happens is that the ciliary muscle even when we are not accommodating it tends to maintain a tone okay and that tone is always present okay so this tone because it is always present even when we are not doing it voluntary voluntarily what i mean to say say is that even when we are not voluntarily accommodating even then the tone of the ciliary muscle is present and because of that tone of ciliary muscle which is present about plus 1 diopter of hypermetropia is getting corrected okay because of the inherent tone of the ciliary muscle and this amount of hypermetropia which is getting corrected because of the inherent tone of ciliary muscle is called the latent hypermetropia okay this is called latent hypermetropia so what i mean to say is if there uh, was a person say mr x who has about plus 4 diopters of hypermetropia hypermetropic error in his eye his plus 1 diopter is being taken care of by the inherent tone of his ciliary muscle that means he need not worry about it okay the ciliary muscle itself is taking care of it and therefore he is having only plus 3 diopters of hypermetropia that he needs to take care of and this plus 1 which is being taken care of by the ciliary muscle this is called the latent hypermetropia let me now explain to you what is manifest hypermetropia if you understood what is latent hypermetropia i should tell you that the word latent actually means something which is 
hidden and cannot be known so what i mean to say is that if our mr x who was having about plus 4 diopters of error and this plus 1 diopter was being corrected by what by the inherent tone of the ciliary muscle and therefore it was the latent error or his hidden error okay so what we saw was actually plus 3 diopter of the hypermetropia so what hypermetropia we see after doing test after doing simple refraction is what is called manifest hypermetropia and the one which is hidden from us because of the hidden activity which is done by the inherent tone of the ciliary muscle is called latent hypermetropia so you might be asking that how do we find out latent hypermetropia that is your homework you have to find it out and let me know in the comment section so let me talk about now the manifest hypermetropia under this manifest hypermetropia that is this plus three diopter in our patient mr x it is again divided into two types facultative hypermetropia and absolute hypermetropia now what happens is this mr x becomes aware that he has a superpower he has what is called accommodation so what does he do he tries to bring back his rays which were focusing behind the retina on to the retina and how does he does that he tries to increase the curvature of his lens he tries to increase the power of his lens by using his accommodation and maybe tries to bring these rays a little bit forward but not completely on the retina but still he has some success so this amount of success or the amount of hypermetropia that he corrected using his accommodation us using his power of accommodation is called facultative hypermetropia that means he has used his faculty of accommodation but there is still some amount of hypermetropic error which is residual which is left which he could not correct even after his accommodative effort and this is called absolute hypermetropia i hope it is clear now right and finally we are left with a term called total hypermetropia so this is big now after this it becomes very easy to understand total hypermetropia is nothing but latent hypermetropia plus your manifest hypermetropia.